So in our next video, we're going to be setting valves on a 461 57S. In our previous video of setting a valve for a 441, I wanted to show the distinctions between the two valve assemblies uh, because the procedure is going to be slightly different on a 461 versus a 441. You can see the set screw is on the upper part of the valve assembly on a 441. Well today with 461 it is on the lower part so we're going to be reversing the order in which we set the valve so that our adjustment is going to be on the top valve versus the bottom part of the valve. We'll initially seat the bottom part of the valve assembly on the orifice and do our adjustment with the top portion of the valve assembly. So I wanted to draw that distinction between the two so that if you have viewed the 441 valve assembly set um, that you would see that there is a difference between the two regulators and the way we will follow this procedure. As you can see, we've already prepped our regulator for the reinstallation of the valve assembly. Make sure at this point that you have disconnected your control line so that you do not have any pressure pulling up the diaphragm under here, okay? So at this point, we have now replaced our valve assembly. We have doped our orifice to make sure of a good seal. <clears throat> so we're going to now assemble our valve assembly and gently tighten the set screw. Okay. <clears throat> Do not connect the upper part of the valve assembly with the diaphragm at this time. We're just going to push that up <clears throat> into the regulator and start the lower orifice and get it started on the threads. So we started that, use our socket Finish the tightening. Okay. Give that a little bit more. Snug that down. And now we are going to make sure that the valve assembly is not tight or not connected to the diaphragm stud. And what we're going to do now is turn the valve assembly so that your set screw is facing out. So with our bottom seat pressed up against the bottom orifice, we are going to loosen the set screw. Okay. Now with the loose set screw, we are going to reach in and we're going to turn and adjust the top part of the seat into adjustment, okay? This is a little difficult on this side. And this is one of the reasons why I did not want you to connect to the diaphragm at this point so that you can get your adjustment right, okay? Takes a little bit of work. Make sure that your set screw is loose enough and keep 
your wrench in there so you don't lose your window for adjusting the set screw. Once you've made that adjustment and both seats are firmly seated against the orifice, you can tighten your set screw and your adjustment should be good. After your adjustment has been made to set your valve, at this time go ahead and start connecting your valve to your diaphragm stud. may take a little bit of maneuvering to make sure that everything's lined up. Now, once you have bottomed out, you can feel that, once you've bottomed out, make sure you turn your valve assembly counterclockwise a half to a full turn. That ensures that the valve will not bind once your bottom plate is put back on. Okay. Check for free travel. You can push the valve assembly up and down. That's the reason that you took your control line off so it can breathe. Do that several times. Make sure that everything is free and travel. So after you've set your uh, valve, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the side inspection plates and the bottom plate. Make sure that your Tetra seal is properly seated in the groove on each component. Now because these have the Tetra seals, you do not need to dope these threads. You may want to put some lube or some molly on them just to make sure that there's no issues as far as rust or seizing. You can put some never seize on those. But at this point, the Tetra seals will hold. Go ahead and take your forward wrench, tighten these back down. going to reinstall the side inspection or the bottom inspection plate okay you can see the bushing and pin assembly make sure you line up your fork properly so that you do not bind here make sure that's nice and loose you'll need to give that a little bit of a push and then you'll need to line up your threaded holes and get those started. Make sure when you tighten the bolts that you do it in a star pattern to pull that inspection plate up nice and evenly otherwise you will bind that stem and all your hard work will be for naught Go ahead and tighten those valve, those down.
At this point, we're going to go ahead and test for our lock off. We're going to reconnect our downstream control line. <clears throat> We're going to slowly open our inlet valve, very slowly. This will increase pressure. You will be watching your inlet pressure gauge to see it climb. As it climbs, open your downstream so that you equalize pressure on both sides of the regulator. This time with your inlet valve completely open, slowly close off your outlet pressure. And you can see now that we're locking off without a spring under one pound. It is not climbing and that's what you need to look for to make sure that you have good lock off.